Okay, now we're going to get into the physics part of integration. Uh, and once again, integration from our last video, integration was adding up the segments below a graph. In physics, it's not that we always have graphs. We can do that, and I'll show you that also. It's sometimes we have concepts. Physics are about real physical phenomena. So we're going to be adding up things. An example of this, something you might see is a big metal sphere. This is something you're going to see all over the place in the second semester in E&M. That's the worst sphere I could possibly draw. But if it has an uneven, uh, excuse me, an irregular, a, a non-uniform density, in other words, if we want to find the density of this, maybe it's a charge density, maybe it's an actual density in, in the mass per unit volume. If it's less dense in the middle and more dense to the outside, or vice versa. They'll have, a, they'll have a, a, an equation for this, or they'll have an expression for this. And we have to be able to add up all the little infinitesimal parts of that and figure out the total mass or the total charge. Okay, so that's somewhere where it comes up an awful lot in physics. And again, you're going to get really good at this when we get into E&M. But let me just start really way back at a simple, simple point. I just want to show you, okay, I've got this wire. Okay, here's my wire. And it is length L long. I'm going to call this zero, and I'm going to call this L, capital L. That's how long it is. And I want to find out, since it measures from the zero point up to L, and this is going to sound just absurdly trivial to you, but bear with me on this because it's step one of how to really start thinking about adding up parts of something, which is the physics interpretation of integration. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, I know this starts here at zero and it goes up to L. Pretend I didn't say that it's L meters long. If I knew it's zero and it goes up to L, and I want to find out how long it is, uh, what I could do is add up all the little chunks of it. Okay. So there's a little chunk there, and I'm going to call that DL with a little lowercase script L, okay? And I'm going to add up all of those. So in other words, I can divide this into all sorts of evenly spaced little chunks. All the way down. And I'm going to find the length of each of those little chunks, and I'm going to add them all, all together. Okay, obviously we can do this in our head, but here we go. So what I want to do is I want to integrate all the little differential chunks. So the total length, uh, I wish I hadn't called that L. Okay, let me, let me write that again. Length, here we go, equals the integral of all these little infinitesimal chunks. In other words, the sum of all those little chunks going from 0 to L. Uh, what's important here is that this, these two limits here ultimately agree with this. They're consistent. In other words, they measure positions in length. And this differential element, I'll just write differential element, is in that same dimension. Okay? We'll see more about this when we get into two dimensions. Um, okay, now you might remember that I had written earlier that integral of dx is x plus some constant. And if we do this, the integral of dl, once again, we've got a definite integral, meaning we've got the two endpoints here. So we don't have to worry about this c. For the time being, let me just do it with the c, show you what happens. Okay, the integral of dx is x plus c. The integral of dl will be l plus c. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to l. What that means, I'm going to take this with l being this value, and then this, subtract this with l being that value. So l, capital L, I'm plugging in for that. So it's l plus c, some constant minus 0, I'm plugging that in for that, 0 plus c. We can see positive c minus c, those c's will always cancel for a definite integral, so we don't have to worry about that c out there. That's why it's not uncommon 
to write this instead of that as just like this, L from 0 to L. Just leave the C out. It ends up to be the same thing. This ends up to be L minus 0, which is just L. Oh my goodness, we found out how long that is, how long that wire is. Of course it's that long, but we used integration to really, instead of proving that it's L long, we're really just proving that integration, uh, demonstrating that L integration works for this interpretation. Okay, let's make it one tiny bit harder. Okay, let's now say that we have that same wire, goes from zero to L, and now it's got a linear mass density, and I'm going to use lambda to represent that. That's lambda. I hope you know that. If you don't, we'll learn about that pretty soon. Okay, and that's the number of kilograms. It's, let's just put this mass per unit length. Mass per unit length. length. Okay, how many kilograms per meter? In other words, this wire, a little chunk of that thing, will have a certain number of kilograms for every meter that you have in there. We'd multiply lambda times the length to figure out the mass. Okay, now if we want to find out the total mass, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to say I want to add up all the masses. Okay, so I want to integrate o from 0 to L over all the little mass elements, the differential mass elements. So this has a mass dm, that little chunk there. Okay, well, I don't have what dm is. I can't integrate. I don't have any mass information. This is the only thing I have. So what I need to do is I need to find out, okay, can I write this dm in terms of other things? Since I'm going from 0 to L, that's a length type thing. Can I write this in terms of length? Well, yes, I can because I've got this alpha. So let me rewrite that as integral from 0 to L. dm, right over here, dm is just equal, remember the mass equals lambda times the length, lambda times the differential width of that, the length there, dl. So I can write that down here. Instead of writing integral of dm, I'm going to write integral of lambda dl. Once again, I'm trying to add up all the little mass elements. Okay, When I do that, lambda is a constant. Okay, we're just saying that it doesn't change from here to here. It's so many kilograms, let's say three kilograms per meter. Three kilograms per meter. For every little chunk in there, it's the same density. So when I integrate that, that's a constant. You can actually take constants out in front. Okay, now I've got that integral. That's a very easy integral. We actually did that in the last one. And that is going to be just L script L, lowercase script L, evaluated from 0 to L, and that's going to be lambda times capital L minus lambda times 0. is just lambda times L. And once again, this is a trivial, trivial result. We know if it's got a length of this, and we know alpha, we just multiply them together to get the mass. In the next uh, next video, I'll show you why we actually need integration. So all I've done is shown you a rough interpretation of how integration is used in physics. Next, I'll show you why we actually need it.